If you've ever been in the military and you've moved everything from one connex to another connex, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like, comment, all this stuff helps you out quite a bit. The comment section is, as usual, out of control. Get down there, check it out, and see what the uh, best of the internet has to offer. If you guys are looking to support the channel, uh, there are multiple ways to do that. We have Alonzo Defense Group. We have sick belts and t-shirts, and they show people that you are not afraid of the dark. Maybe a little bit, but definitely afraid of girls. I'm just... Just kidding, there are uh, six shirts, go ahead and get them. Um, discount code Grantham only works on the belt. So if you want some plaid, Vertex, 25% off with Grantham, get in there, get that. Finally, ammunition, guys. I know you need to train to look cool. So we have LAX and we also have Freedom Munitions. Discount code Grantham gets you 5% off. And uh, you know it's gonna make you look cool because if you don't shoot, then you know what's the point of all of this? <laughs> so with those things out of the way, let's go ahead and let's talk about um, what's going on today. It's not too complex. Um, we're going to be talking about the new Emissary Belt. So the Emissary Belt is a collaboration between me and Alonzo Defense Group. And we uh, kind of thought up uh, a couple different ways to make a better kind of EDC battle belt, gun belt, and all that type of stuff. So this is version 2. Um, I've been using version 1 for a long, long time at this point. And I'm going to continue using version 1, not because version 1 is better. In fact, version 2 is better in almost every way. But I just want to see when this original prototype is going to fail. And that doesn't look like it's going to be any time uh, within my lifetime. So the question is, what is the Emissary Gun Belt, if you're not familiar with it? Well, um, we wanted to design a belt that could be used for duty use, that could be used in the military, and that could be used for everyday carry. It could look good with a suit. You should have a suit. So we came up with this. Um, we use scuba webbing because it's super durable and also very thick, water resistant, all that good stuff. And then we use some heavy duty threading. And in fact, on the version two, the threading is even more heavy duty, uh, even more so than the version one, which means it's going to last even longer. So I, I guess it will last forever. Uh, a big thing too is that we've reinforced the eyelets right here. So they were previously re unreinforced and was never a problem for me. I never had any fatigue on mine. But uh, the guys over at Alonzo Defense Group wanted to make sure that this thing would never fail, and so they reinforced them. They also did a different buckle. So the buckle now makes the belt sit a little closer to your body. Um, again, I have any problems with mine, but they're continually improving things. A cool thing with the buckle, too, for military use is that it is solid brass, which means that it's non-ferromagnetic, which means when you're getting down to do compass work and that type of stuff, the poncho over your head and all that kind of crap, um, it's not going to draw the compass needle you know, towards the belt. So... That is the good news there. So in any case, if you're wondering about the rigidity of the belt, um, super rigid, and the whole point of that is if you carry a gun for you know more than a couple hours, um, you have those flimsy little belts that are going to fall apart on you. So there are more comfortable belts out there, but there are not more comfortable belts when it comes to carrying a gun for a long period of time. In my opinion, am I biased? Probably because I have a vested interest in this belt, but I always use it. If you guys notice, I'm always using this belt. So... Um, if you're interested in it, you can hop on to Alonzo's Defense Group. We'll have a link right down there in the description. You can get yourself it with that discount code, Grantham. Um, so that is it when it comes to our belt. Um, it's pretty simplistic, and it works. So the question is, is as far as my belt setup goes, what's that looking like nowadays? Because, um, you know, there's always a question about kind of how I've updated my belt kit and that type of thing. So I figured we'd take a quick moment and talk a little bit about it, about how I have mine set up. Of course, mine is set up for military use primarily and shooting and that type of stuff. If you're a police officer or you run vehicle ops, you're going to have a different setup because, you know, if you're sitting down for in a car or something like that, you're not going to want to have as much crap or you're going to want to have it in a different place and all that type of stuff. So I am going to intersplice between you know, video of me wearing the pants and then me talking about them. That way you're not having to stare at my crotch uh, for so long because we don't want that. <laughs> you know, there's going to be a comment about that now. Um, so I am running STAC uh, Kiwi Magazine pouches. I'm a huge fan of them. The reason is that they use Kydex retention. It's easy to draw from them. They work well, all that type of stuff. Um, I have mine set up for a Glock. Of course, if you have a different pistol, 
you know, run different pistol mags and that type of thing. I have attached them to the belt using the belt loops that come from STAC that you can buy. Um, highly recommended. They keep them very stable on my belt. Uh, the question I get asked a lot is, do I use the connected ones or the disconnected ones between the magazine and the right between the pistol magazine and the rifle magazine pouches? Um, sometimes it depends on the setup. It depends on where your belt loops are on your on your pants and if it works. On this particular setup, I do not. I have them separated, but I sometimes do run them together. So either is going to work. Don't stress over it too much um, if that's the setup that you're going to be running. Um, my rifle mag pouch, if you notice, I have the rifle tilted back. The reason for that is as your hand comes down to draw, it's going to be easier to have your hand tilt back, grab it, rotate it into the gun. Easier if you have it facing forward. That's kind of less ergonomic. It's going to make it a little bit tougher to draw it. Everyone's a little bit different, but this is the way that a lot of people run it. Doesn't mean that's specifically the best, just um, for most human beings, it tends to work really well. Moving back from there, typically you're going to see a D-ring or something like that um, holding a bunch of chem sticks. So I've opted to go with a Blue Force Gear Marco. If you, if you notice, kind of from here, I have a lot of Blue Force Gear products, um, not because I'm paid by them or anything, just because I like their stuff quite a bit. So the Marco um, uses many chem, many chem sticks in like a magazine. That way, when you need one, you simply pop it out, crack it, and throw it to the ground as opposed to having a bunch of mini chem sticks and cracking those and pulling those off and taping them and all that type of stuff. It just saves time. Um, I'm a huge fan of it. Moving back from there, kind of the big thing everyone's going to see right here is a dump pouch. So why a dump pouch? As you know, previously I've talked about not wanting dump pouches on my belt kit. Um, the reason is, is I talked to a bunch of people who needed to have dump pouches for a variety of reasons um, due to their job and being able to store things. So I decided to um, have a dump pouch on my kit to show people kind of what I would do if I had a dump pouch. This is Blue Force Gear 1. It's very small, compact. You need it. You simply pull down on this and then it's going to pop out your dump pouch. It has a nice little retainer on the top so you can cinch it down to make sure nothing's going to fly out of there. So if you need a dump pouch, I'm a huge fan of the Blue Force Gear. Uh, dump pouch and it is good to go. This is the belt mounted option. They also have a molly option if you have a molly belt. Um, heaven forbid you don't have ours. Moving back from there, I have the Blue Force Gear Micro Trauma Now pouch. I'm a huge fan of it. It can be pulled from either side to release it. Um, I do have the medical kit that comes from Blue Force Gear, which is why I think it stays in place. Some people don't use the included kit because it costs a lot of money and then they find that it doesn't pack down correctly and then it tends to kind of un undo itself and that type of thing. So uh, if you're having those troubles or even the trouble with the um, kit that usually comes with it, what I would recommend is putting a little bit of Velcro um, in there because there's a Velcro pad that kind of keeps it in place. And if you put a little bit more in there, that's going to keep it from going. The big thing is, is that you can stuff a lot in this kit and the more stuff you have in there, the more pressure it's going to put outward and keep it from going anywhere. So it's a good option. There's also other good options from like Crow Medical and Dark Angel Medical and all those groups. So Find one that works for you, but I'm a huge fan of the uh, Blue Force gear. Going from there, I don't have anything from here to the pistol. That way the butt of the handgun doesn't get in the way. Uh, the holster that I'm running is a Safari Land 6354DO. It is an ALS holster. And that ALS holster is on one of the QLS mounts, which is looks like basically a giant buckle. So it could come and done. Um, this is running on a Safari Land mid-ride adapter. I like the mid-ride because it drops it just about the butt of the handgun, just about to like the belt level, and uh, that makes for a really smooth draw. Now, as far as the ALS goes, how it works is it locks onto the ejection port. That way, once it's in the holster, it's not going to go anywhere. But as soon as you hit that little release right here, the thumb release, it's going to release it, and then it just locks back in. I'm a huge fan of it. Um, Depending on your job, you might have to do something with a hood or something like that, and that's fine. Um, as well, on my 6354DO, I also have the OTS uh, nub mod, and that just makes the um, release a little bit larger. It's a little bit easier to draw from and that type of thing. So, big fan of that, and that is my holster setup. Moving forward from there, another change that I have is I have a tourniquet mounted on my belt at the front. This is from Titan Tack Innovations. Um, the reason that I've done a tourniquet on the front is that um, I wanted something a little bit more accessible because having something in like a pocket on your pants or something like that could sometimes be a problem. So I want something that I could just get to. I'm using the soft T wide tourniquet. There are of course tons of different tourniquets that are good. Uh, find whichever one uh, has good reviews on that type of thing. I'm typically going to recommend CAT and the soft T wides. Get training with them, otherwise you're not going to be good with them. Um, 
As far as the pants are concerned, they are cry dry fires. So it's kind of like a weird mix and they are in woodland. They're kind of expensive. Um, if you need them, you need them. And it's going to kind of depend on your job and that type of thing. One final note about the holster is that I do have a thigh strap on that. And the reason for that is the thigh strap is from T-Rex Arms. That's where you can get it. It's like 10 bucks. The reason I did that was when you lift out on the holster to draw, if you don't have something kind of keeping that mid ride down, it tends to push up and then kind of impede the draw a little bit. So the thigh strap is always a good idea. You should only ever have one thigh strap. If your gun is low enough that it needs two, then 1991 called and they want their holster back. So guys, that is my belt set up. Um, the biggest thing is that um, when it comes to your belt, um, stiffer sometimes is better sometimes. So we have a nice stiff belt. Uh, not always though. You don't always want something super stiff. Um, thank you for watching guys. We know that's what's really important is looking cool. The belt undoubtedly looks cool, but what looks even cooler is getting the training to make sure that you know what you're doing. So if you're looking for training, you have Cogworks and Bear Solutions who come out to the West Coast quite a bit. Middle of the country, you have Bear Solutions. And then on the East Coast for my mill guys, you've got Esoteric. Lots of great companies. Get in there, get that training. And as always, guys, thank you for watching. And I've got nothing else for you. Okay, quick note on um, dating. I don't know why we do this, but we are. Uh, <laughs> I got a lot of messages from guys saying, hey, I, uh, I gave a girl flowers. Or I gave a girl flowers. And uh, it didn't go well for me. I'm like, hey, what'd you do? They're like, well, I... I gave her flowers like every day. I'm like, were you guys like dating or like, was there an established relationship? And he's like, nah. I'm like, okay, well, that could be a problem. Um, again, uh, showering with gifts is not a good thing. So um, unless you're in an established relationship where the girl makes her wishes known and that type of thing, don't shower with gifts. That's um, awkward for everybody socially. Uh, kind of dial it back a notch. Maybe get to know them a little bit. Small recommendations. Guys, take care. Thank you for watching. I've got nothing else for you.